want to say Elio Pace, Umberto Pace, and Amy Rihanna Wertha here in the studio, all the way from England across the pond. We want to thank them for coming in, right? It's if wonderful, can, wonderful, wonderful. If I can just, since we're playing yes. this, that's why, they, that's why they're here. Elio was oh, yes. nominated for an Independent Music Award. The award ceremonies is taking place this weekend in New York City. And it's for the best long-form vi- musical video Yeah, yeah. for the Billy Joel Songbook. Uh, you can find the DVD and the CD on eliopace.com. Congratulations. It's Thank really you. Yay. I, I am, I'm still blown away by it because, you know, you, t- you don't expect that. I didn't do it for that. But to have been recognized, I, it, there's some irony, isn't there, that, it, that, that it's taken America, <laughs> where my love of music stems from and where Billy Joel was from, it's taken America to recognize it. But I'm so thrilled. No. And this was out of nowhere, right? You, it's not like you submitted it or something. Oh, no, it, you have to submit. Oh, you, oh, do. you do? Oh, no, but everybody, even the Oscars, you submit the film to the Oscars. Oh, so who? Yeah. So tell us the story. Who submitted this? My manager, Peter. Um, oh, okay. Pete Jenkins, who's on his way over as we speak, midair. Oh. Um, he'll be here uh, later on this evening. He submitted it, and uh, he said, I'm going to submit it. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, he needs an award. I said, no. Oh, okay. All right, well, okay, go for it. And so... Do you have a speech prepared if you win? I haven't got anything prepared. (gasps) And it's, I don't know whether it's like the Oscars where you go and you go, and the winner is, bum, and they play a piece of music and you're going to get up quick before the music ends. And and then you go, I want to thank, thank you so much. I'm not doing anything. It's just an honor to be nominated with all these talented artists. That's it. What if if, if you don't win? Are you going (laughs) to? Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's what you have to practice. We'll all get up and leave. Because everyone's going to look at you and you have to be like, We'll all get up and leave. That's right. That would be hilarious. You should like stand <laughs> up and like like throw <laughs> your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Flip the table. Yeah. Yes. What? Yeah. Have you seen yeah. It? You're Have all you a bunch of wankers. <laughs> <laughs> I came all the way here from England. This guy came from Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Flip a table and walk out. Have That'd be hilarious. No, I know. Right. No, I mean, I know it's very, very corny and very cliche to say, but please understand. You must understand, surely, that it's <laughs> it's not about the winning. Being award nominated, the award, the award nominated Billy Joel songbook is enough. No, nah, you got to nah, win. No, I got to win. <laughs> nah. Sorry, we're a little competitive too, over here. You're too humble. No, you got to win. The well, I'm not. <laughs> Emigrate from Mr. Pace, mm. Mr. Pace, right. Umberto Pace. Nice. Born in Naples. Born in Naples. Yeah. Stayed <coughs> when. Um, so Napolitan. Napolitan. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. And then we came into Tuscany, which is North Italy. Okay. Yeah. And we stayed there. And then from Tuscany, we came into England. How old okay. were you, Dad? 1964. 1964? We came here. Okay. There. In England. Right, right. in England. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's still America's like a, you know, another part of England. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's, it's all good. It's right. actually an interesting story. We were talking about it about a week ago. We were asking um, some, you know, where Elio and, and Amy and, and his di- dad can go, and you guys were nice enough to Thank you for that, hook us everyone. up with some ni- nice suggestions. Uh, but it's an interesting story as to why he Elio wanted to get you here, because you... you Technically, you've been to America, but you never actually set foot on American soil. First time. Right. But you wow. were here, w- you worked in the QE2, yes, right? Back yeah. in 1977. Just, just one week only. One week only. But before that, mm-hmm. I worked to Windsor Castle, another ship. Mm-hmm. That so what happened on the QE2? 
Come on, how you did guys you came? With... You came here, but right? But you didn't. No, no, only two hours. Right, but on, you didn't. But you didn't actually come off the boat. You just no, looked. No. You looked from because the deck I, out because I was tied. <gasps> you work for a week, right? As waiter. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then two hours. Making sure you come back before two hours, otherwise you're going to be behind. So I, I went in my room, sleep a little bit, have a rest. That's it, two did hours, and they're just gone. Did you look out the window or anything? Yeah, there's a window there. Did you look around? Did you see buildings and stuff? I tell you, I don't know. Have you ever been to, uh, to the uh, rounds where the. Uh, where the docks are. Like the trees. docks. Yeah, yes. in Manhattan? Those, <coughs> yeah, yeah. The, those days. I, I, I had to say that. Yeah. It was a little bit dirty. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, correct, correct. Mm -hmm. All the people yes. waiting for the boat, for the ship to stop. And uh, they were hungry. Mm -hmm. They wanted to work in the ship, clean right. on the floor to have something to eat. Right. That's uh, even in Windsor Castle. Uh, Fun, so you got to fanta America. fantastic. You got so, to yeah, America. Because this time. is this story is new to me. I got yeah. it all wrong. I thought my dad had <coughs> had because normally a cruise ship arrives at eight in the morning. Right. You get you get until five in the evening to have a look around the place. You get right. back on. You got everyone knows you've got like eight hours. But Dad said to me, only, and I and I thought my dad was working that day on the ship and wasn't allowed off the ship, but managed to get off for a cigarette for an hour to set foot on the dock. Not even that, because the ship was only there. Literally for two hours for, before yeah. they literally it was a test. Yeah. Run. Well, it was a test run because they were coming back. It was a test run. That's right. That ship. was a, just a <coughs> try. So, try. So you looked out the window. You're like, oh, that's dirty. I don't step with that. That's <laughs> no, too no, dirty no, for no, me. No, this no, is no, disgusting. No, I, 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 I hate I this place. No, no. I, I think he turned around. He said, "America." <laughs> we're back on the boat. <laughs> no for that. No. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. No, 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 no we're, no, teasing, no. we're joking. No, no, so, but were you upset? Were you were you thinking? Oh, I wish I had time to go check out the city. No. No. He was because tired. I was tired. <laughs> right. I wanted to have a rest. Right. But no, but yeah, but no, I get that. But were you mad? Were you saying I wish there was? I wish we were here the full day so I could have seen Long uh, New York yeah, a little bit after, <laughs> after my yeah, rest. Yes, I could have gone yeah. if yeah. I would have more time. Yeah, the sixties. But only two hours. That was nineteen seventy-seven. Uh, oh, seventy-seven. So forty-two years That's ago. That's a huge difference to what New York City exactly. looks like now. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. without the really twin like towers were brand then. new. They were only the what five years old. Twin towers without were brand really, new. Dad, the city was bankrupt at that time. Exactly. Yeah, true. You would have you would have seen the towers because Dad says he walked around the dock uh, yep. sorry the deck the top deck had a quick look around and went oh, it's the docks it's the docks container ships everywhere right you know? right. I went okay and I've got two hours uh, I'm not going to say anything I may as well go and get some sleep so you didn't see anything Statue of Liberty anything well I saw from far away but some far away I didn't so say. 42 years later daddy you're coming to America with me and he's 79 years old fantastic, and this is fantastic. his first time in the States really enjoyed it yay Now, the Huey Lewis thing was actually an interesting story Yeah, when it first came back because it was at a gig with you. It was last year. Mm -hmm. So L Huey Lewis lost his hearing. He, he has this unfortunate thing gone wrong with his hearing, which meant that th the news, him and the news, had to cancel everything. Right. He can't hear music anymore. Oh. It just sounds like a rumble. He described it to me. Now, I'm in, a, I'm in a very privileged position. I've worked with Huey on and off for the last eight, nine years. So we email each other. And I have really care about his welfare because sure. he is literally one of my greatest heroes. Back to the Future. <gasps> That's you know. why you like those no, movies well, so it's, much. It's just everything. Just he was he, the music, that band, them live, the sound of those songs, power, his voice. I, you know, amazing. So when I became friends with him, it really was like, you know, that that thing of don't meet your don't meet your heroes because they don't turn out to be as not with Huey, the right. s the most down to earth. 
loveliest guy you could possibly wish to meet. And very professional. Mm. Like when we met him, you know, when yeah, we were in England yeah, exactly. with you. you and were, you he there. was he knew he knows exactly what needs to be done. He's so kind. Oh, he's so He's in charge. He's with giving with his time. He's beautifully. He's and he really knows things. Like like yeah. uh, within like three notes he was back to the yeah. sound guy saying Yep. You know, he knows exactly what he's yep. doing. Yep. He, like, there was a comfort in his knowledge. There is. Is the way that he's I can so describe it. That's beautiful. He's a comfortable man. Yes. And this, and of all the things, for all the people to get something like this, this is horrible. And um, he can't hear music. Then last year, he goes and plays golf every year. And I see him every year at this golf tournament okay. with all these big stars, you know, Andy Garcia and Samuel L. Jackson and. And all these people, and uh, and they get up, and you know Don Felder from the Eagles, and right. and and they all get up and play with my band. So right. they join in. I do the the gig okay. with my big band horn section backing vocalists. Amy is doing it this year. Yeah, she is. And um, and these guys get up and sing. We've been doing it for 10, 11 years. Yeah. Last year, it was going to be well. Huey's coming to play golf, but oh he he can't. He, 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 Elio, he said <laughs> uh, it's going to be the worst year for me. I don't know how I'm going to you know watch the fun going on and normally he's in charge he runs right. the show right um i said worst well, anyway we were doing the sound check and he comes over yeah he's he, he just finished playing golf he walks over to me at the piano with sound checking i've got people standing next to me huey how are you oh, lovely he said hey well you know it's i can hear you talking he said it's fine when you're talking i can do one-on-one -on -one interviews and stuff but music <clears throat> he said but you know what it's it's sort of okay ish and right. I, I sort of left it. I thought, okay. Maybe I thought, he just needed a rest. Well, I thought he was being. Well, this is. You, you might have hit on something because two hours later, I'm having dinner with the band. An hour before we're supposed to play, he literally comes round the corner into the restaurant with Bill Murray. Uh, the okay, the yeah, actor, yeah, the comedian. Two of them, and right. I said, "Oh hi." He said, "He went, and I'll do my best <coughs> American accent now." He said, yeah. "Oh, here it He's going to sound like here John it Wayne. It's right. going to or a soprano. Or, yeah. <laughs> Elio, I can hear." Here, that's pretty hear. good. That's pretty good. Is I like it. it. Yeah, it uh, actually isn't bad because he's got that raspy coolness yeah. of his voice. Yeah, let's so yeah, go. it's not bad. Elio, I can hear. <laughs> that's it's really good. good. Yeah, okay, good, we great. need to make him like an extra in a movie where he yeah. just has that line. Elio, I can, I can hear. hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. So he's. I said what, and and, and he said I can hear. Right. My hearing started to come back during your sound check. I can hear the music. Okay. Should I get up and sing? And I was chilled again three yeah. times in this show. And I've gone, are you serious? He said, I said, are you? he said, no, I'm thinking, have you got chance that I could sing to? I said, I've got everything we've ever done together. Right. He said, have you got hip to be square? And I went, yes. Yeah. Should we do that? And I went, okay, are you sure? And he did. He got up during the night. Yeah. And he sang hip to be square. Yeah. Amazingly. Yeah. I emailed him a week later. How are you doing? He said, it's gone back again. What? Mm -hmm. So but I they say that's a that's a part of that condition. It yeah. does come and go. So I emailed him about yeah. two Men weeks ago. He has menias. That yes, right? that's yeah. it. Yes, Men I remember disease. what it was called. I emailed him a couple of weeks ago and I said, <coughs> "How are you? You know, out of sight isn't out of mind. How are you yeah. doing?" And he said, "Thanks, pal." He said, "It ain't good." And, and he, they have a new album finished that they were going to go ready to promote. It's a shame. It's, it's, and, it's, and then the poor band too, right? These yeah. guys are all out of jobs. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it could not have <coughs> happened to a nicer man. There are so many people that should not be singing, should not be doing stuff in right. general, whether it's politics or whatever. And Huey Lewis is not one of those people. They and should release the album, then have Elio Pace and the News go out to tour and promote. Elio Pace and the News. Pache. I'm not worthy. Pache. Oh, sure. I'm not worthy. You could, you could totally belt that. I could sing the songs, be. but... I, should, we, should that be our first karaoke song of the day, Hit to Be Square? Oh, oh. no. Just thought of that. You know what? That's why we didn't think of that. Why not? You want to give that one a shot? I don't mind. All right. Are we ready? We're gonna. This will be our first karaoke. Uh, Are you kidding? Uh, I'm not kidding. You, we don't have to. Uh, you mean just like that? Go for it. Then. Just like that. The words. You have to the warm words up. will be there. Well, me, I, me, 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 Say more, say more. Say more. I don't know the words. So like, They're there coming. I used to be a renegade. I used to fool around. 
Don't take the punishment. I had to settle down. Am I doing the whole song? <laughs> I'm playing it real straight. And yes, I cut my hair. You can do the whole song oh, so I can sell it. I think that I'm crazy, but I don't even care. You gotta tell what's going on. It's hip to be square. I love this song. <laughs> it's hip to be square. All right, Eric, get the hell out of here. Do it. No way. Hands and business suits. Come on, Eric. I watch them on TV. Amy. I don't know it. <laughs> Working out most every day and watching what I eat. Wow. They tell me I'm good for me, but I don't even care. I know that it's crazy. I know that it's nowhere, but there is no denying that it's hip to be square. Do 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 do. It's hip to be square. Do 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 do. So hip to be square. Do 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 do. Wow. And you want me to follow that? Yes. Get the hell out of here. Uh, Are you nuts? Me. Where's what? Joe? Joe, you want to think, sing the third verse? Come here. Oh, there's Joe. Joe's Come on, here. Joe. Come Come here, Joe. Joe. I didn't know Joe was here. Joe's here. Come here, Joe. Hey, Joe. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You don't hit me you square. Oh, you forget you're killing how me. young he is. Come on, the sax solo's He's coming so up. Young. Oh, we could do all the football players' uh, background vocals later. Yes. Right? The football yeah. players. <laughs> wow. Now, Amy, what song do you like? What song do you sing? <laughs> We're I like a bit of jazz. Turn up, turn up. It's not too hard to figure out. You see it every day. And those that were the furthest out have gone the other way. You see them on the freeway. But I don't look like fun you Don't try to find it I didn't know the time was come Wow Don't tell me that I'm crazy Tell me I'm nowhere Take it from me, baby It's, it's hip to be square dee, 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 dee. So hip to be square dee, Love you, dee, Huey dee, 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 dee. Hip to be square It's Realization. Like, it's almost like an honor system on your website, kind of. Well, I <clears throat> look. I'm not going to talk for long about this because this really is. Uh, it's it's a serious subject, and because it's about people's livelihood. Sure. It's about people's career. It's about the value of <clears throat> art and the value of music, which, quite frankly, has dropped through the floor all around the world. Um, I'm I'm not against people having their Spotify account or an Apple Music account. Right. But they pay nine ninety nine a month to listen to anything they want. Mm -hmm. That money doesn't go to us. Correct. It doesn't go to the artists, and it's not the people who have the accounts' problem uh, fault, because they they you know it's not everybody. It's my job to understand how my industry works. Right. And I'm in this industry, and it doesn't work very nicely, and so I've had enough of it. I've spent. I put my music up on iTunes. It was there. Uh, before there was Apple Music, it was just the iTunes store, so mm -hmm. people could at least d pay to download your right. music. Right. Right? S um, so I, what you have to do, basically, is when you've finished your album, I don't know if you're going to do the same, and it's fine, but if when you finish your album, you have to find a digital distributor, mm -hmm. right? And this di there's loads of them, and Apple, Apple uh, iTunes recommend them. And basically, you set up a deal with a distributor digitally around the world, and this company... For quite a, a large chunk of your of your uh, ninety nine cents for a download, mm -hmm. take it's you know it's almost it's about forty percent, right? They disper they distribute your music digitally mm -hmm. around the world mm -hmm. too, 
at the time, the 12 years ago, would have been Apple, um, sorry, um, iTunes. And then, of course, there was Spotify. Rhapsody. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, and Deezer, mm -hmm. you know, all, all these places. Now you go, okay, I'll let, I'll let this happen, right? So Spotify, okay, well, I'm not getting any money. But you know what? I'm going to get my music out there. It's going to, somebody in Japan is going to be able to listen to my song. Right. Until 12 years down the line, you realize that you're not earning any money at all. They've, they've now invented Apple Music along the way, which is another Spotify for $9.99. Anybody can listen to anything. Brand new album by Paul McCartney, and you don't have to pay for it. Right. It's free because you've paid your $9.99 and you can listen to as much music yeah. as you want. Now, Paul McCartney may not worry about it, but artists like us, you go, hold on a minute. And so I called up iTunes and I said, listen, I don't mind keeping my music on your store, right? But do I have to have it on Apple Music? Because I'm mm -hmm. thinking about getting rid of it off Spotify anyway, because after 12 years of this, you realize that... You're, you're not earning any money. And I mean, nothing. Mm -hmm, right. You know, if you want to call $12 a month earning a living selling your music, right? Yeah. When you can sell your CDs at your gigs, you sell through your website. Mm -hmm. Someone else is getting rich yeah. off the music, the content that I'm, along with millions of other artists, mm -hmm. are providing them. Yeah. And, no, and, and I'm not a big enough mouth to shout about it but believe me there have been some big people who've been shouting about this going this is not right yeah you know naught point zero point zero zero three eight cents for every stream i think even taylor swift at one point got a check for 35 dollars <laughs> yeah uh, for, for, it's uh, you insanity. Know, it's it's unbelievable, and I'm in the end. I just got. I went. No, no. This is. I'm going to enter into a brand new, and final phase of selling my music. Right until something changes. Um, so because uh, because I told iTunes, I said, listen, uh, can I just sell? No, you can't. So it, it's, it, it's, if you want to be on iTunes, you have to give you have to give Apple Music and App, everything you or have nothing. to be part of Apple Music or nothing. And we suggest that you are part of Apple Music because, you know, the streaming element. And I said, yeah, but we don't make any money <coughs> at all. And, you know, and I'm an independent artist. This is what this award was all about. The Independent Music Awards, which is why this means so much to me, this award, oh, because yeah. of what it is. This isn't this isn't a conglomerate. This isn't record company politics and backhanders going on here. Mm -hmm. You you know, I'll, I'll lend you my yacht if you make sure my artist wins. <laughs> right. I'm sorry, guys. This is it, we all know this is what happens. Yeah, this isn't that they didn't even know how to pronounce my name properly here. But they gave me an award, which means it's. From it's for the right reason, yeah. and as an independent musician and a, a producer of my own material, this costs thousands of pounds to produce. Right. Mm -hmm. You know how much your albums just cost mm -hmm. you, and how much hard work you've put into it, mm -hmm. and you remix that, and you want to get it right. You want to get it right, and and them out there just don't care. I don't mean the people. I mean the business doesn't right. care. Well, they'll take your nine ninety nine, and I'm to see. Point zero zero three eight cents for every stream. How many streams do I have to have to even make a hundred dollars? Right. Right. Well, then you'll see the streams that like, oh, it hit five million, and you think, wow, well, they, well, you know, we'll do wrong. the maths. Well, right. Exactly. Yeah. That's even exactly if, right. Do you know what? I, if they, if this just one day it will change because someone big is going to Michael Bublé <clears> is going to stand up or or um or uh, you well, know Steven, Bruno Bruno Mars is going to yeah exactly Steven Tyler is the one we when Steven you and Tyler I were, yeah that was the clip that I saw he stood he inter he was in on an, an <clears> interview <throat> and oh my word he berated Spotify it was uh, Rogan Joe Rogan he was on Joe Rogan he, he berated them and and uh, and all of them he said this is disgusting he said. I'm okay. I've made some money. But what about all the artists coming up who haven't got record company deals, right. mm -hmm. who do pay for their records to be made, and all those wonderful people out there that love your music and you want to give it to them, right? You and it's not you just you either. It. It's it's the people that play yeah. on it. And you mentioned Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney's made his money, but a lot of the musicians he's used through the years, they haven't made their money. Yeah. You know, those guys are trying to make men's meet just as much as we are. But it's about it's about who owns the copyright in the audio. Mm -hmm. So I own the copyright of everything I've recorded <clears throat> because I've paid for it. If mm -hmm. I'd been in right. a record company, they would have owned it. Right. But I own it. Right. So I'm producing, I'm manufacturing, I'm distributing, I'm the artist, mm -hmm. right? They're my songs, or if they're not mm -hmm. Billy Joel, I've done my own material as mm -hmm. well. But 
to get no reward on this digital system is disgusting. Mm -hmm. And I decided uh, about eight months ago that that was enough. And it is my final phase until something changes. You know, even if they gave you point one, ten cents for every stream, you can work that out. For every, you know, you make a hundred thousand right. on on a million streams. <clears throat> right. That's worth it. Right. And I wonder how much they're making. Mm. Like, is it just ridiculous the amount of money that they're making off of all of you? You people? work it out. Billions yeah. and billions and billions. Yeah. And they're I think about like, like as a kid, like it, th prices haven't even gone up like i remember buying you know albums as a teenager and they were you know i don't know 10 somewhere between like you know ten dollars a few dollars more and it hasn't it's not even like when you go to buy an album or a cd or you know whatever you're buying it's eighty dollars i mm. mean it's still right. yeah, it's yeah. still it's still the price of a bottle yeah. of wine yeah and someone spent yeah. Days, hours, months, years. Can you imagine working on an entire beautiful album, and it's just for them to be like, "I hope you like it." There you yeah. go. And it's Give just, it away. It's just sad. Can you imagine the yeah. Elton John film coming out, Bohemian Rhapsody coming out? It's going. It's released. Just go to Netflix right now, and and you can watch it and for your nine ninety nine. Download it for free. Yeah. And download it. I mean, of course, we all know piracy is still out there and people will always get stuff if you want on torrent things we understand yeah. all that's mm -hmm. been going on since you know home tape home taping will you know with the, with the skull and crossbone thing mm -hmm. on cassettes and yep. vinyl it's been going on for years but this is legal yeah. but this is this is a legal industry <clears throat> where I, I remember seeing um it was mark Knopfler's new album that came out i don't know a couple of months ago and i was excited and and there it was advertised out now, Mark Knopfler's new album. Go to iTunes Store, uh, go to, you know, whatever it is and the website or download it for free now on Apple Music. And that's mm -hmm. when I went, what? Yeah. How, how, how have we got to a point where the value from, of music is basically zero? But it wasn't it. But what's the difference? Because in the 70s, well, the days of vinyl. D didn't bands they made an album didn't they just get a penny or two per album oh but that's a whole different thing that's them listen back in the 60s and 70s for you to make a record you had to be signed to a major deal they right. had you signed up and there were loads of companies around right you couldn't an independent artist couldn't go out and and distribute a hundred thousand records around america back in the 60s you had to have a distribute you had to be part of a conglomerate mm -hmm. Th that's the an incredible thing about the digital domain is that people like us can make our own music mm -hmm. and we can instantly have somebody in japan sitting in their underpants downloading right. my song you yep. know what i'm saying which is fantastic mm -hmm. you can have it up and in two days time someone's listening to it i'm just saying please can you pay for it right and we're talking one dollar one pound could you pay for it? Right. Because you don't go, you don't mind going to Starbucks and spending six ninety nine on a on a piece of cake and a, and a, a watered down, you know, coffee. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. I'm asking you to pay one pound for for a song, which right. has taken me how long to create and produce and, and release? And, and nine ninety nine for an album of twelve or fourteen songs. It's mm -hmm. not a lot of money. And I don't blame the people. As I say, this is not the public's fault because they don't know this. I don't right. think they get it. I they, just I don't. I, don't, I really don't right. think they get it. They and get and I think that you know these songs like touch their lives and change their mm. lives. And I think that if yeah. they really really understood. They'd send all of their favorite artists ten dollars. Right, well, yeah. let, yeah, let me ask you this, all right, and that taps onto what you're doing. But Ken Pichel brings up a good point: the younger generation is growing up, or even has grown up, thinking that paying for music is unnecessary or silly. So, do you do you guys think mm -hmm. that that's, that's the whole point, right? Yeah. But do you think that the young generation, let's say five years from now, because they've grown up with this yeah. line of thinking, you do you think that somebody, whether it's you, Steven Tyler, anybody, comes up and says? You know, everything you're saying, it's ridiculous. We shouldn't be. You it's not going to be me or Steven Tyler Whoever that's going to make the difference. Whoever but, but, it is. But, it will, but, but if <clears throat> um, um, Ariana Grande and Bruno Mars stand up and say something, or even the rappers stand up, or the hint, I don't know who these. Right, you know, right. But you think if they stand up and say something, you think this generation is going to say, yeah, they're right, let's they start are. paying. Absolutely. Tiny. Even though, But even though they've grown up thinking that. It's I mean, you've got to change their whole mindset. It's about education. Correct. It's education. It's like it's right. like they telling, don't know. You know, it's like it's like finding out that, that smoking kills you. Actually, no. you know, 
Smoking can kill you. So, so don't smoke in the car with your chi- with your children in the back seat. You know, mm-hmm. don't fly, don't smoke on planes anymore. Wear your seatbelt in the front. It's like once upon a time, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, hey, smoking, right, driving right, around, right. you know, waving. It, but not anymore. Mm-hmm. People now, we know more. We've evolved. Right. Mm-hmm. Except the music business has gone literally backwards. Right. To yes. the point okay. where music has no value. It's education. If one of... if the educators who talk to these young people said, "Do you know every time you st- every time you just stream your music, you, uh, your favorite artist is now they think, well, my favorite artist is rolling around in a you know in a, in, in limousines and they've mm-hmm. got five houses and you know you know they don't need my ten dollars." Right. That's okay. <clears throat> I can see the argument there. It's, it's, it still stands that 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 that's them. But what about but what about all the other people that aren't? rolling around in, in limousines. And the people that are really talented that are not even going to bother because they but have, you, you know, a wife and kids to take care of yeah. and they just don't have the... But you support, and are, Even though you love it, you just, you have to find a different profession other than this great thing. You, I mean, think of all the art- artists we would have lost, like, in the 60s. Yes. If, you know, they weren't paid for their music. Ex- exactly. Like, now it seems, and, you know, tell, tell me if I'm wrong, seems to me like the only way an artist will make a living is if they... If they get on a stage and tour and they sell tickets. That's it. Tickets and, and, and merchandise at the gigs. It helps. Yeah. And, the, and you know what? The fans mm-hmm. of us, mm-hmm. of the artists, uh, of, of wonderful people out there who are in it for the music, <laughs> oh, yeah. right? They don't mind turning up and putting $15 on a table to take your DVD home and buy a T-shirt. Mm-hmm. They want you to have it. Mm-hmm. And they want you to. And, then, and it's so wonderful that they want you to know I've bought into you and I value you. And here's my 20 pounds mm-hmm. and... I'm not going to miss it because I love what you do. Mm-hmm. How do we turn that around? How do we educate younger people? Listen, the same, you know, this, yes, they don't know, but also younger people, a lot of people, uh, you know, and we, they're closing down music, music lessons in schools. A lot of people oh. don't know how to play guitar anymore. Right, yeah. Most people don't know what a clarinet is anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not it's, important. You know? It's not important. It's, it's, it affects it, everything. It is important. <laughs> and... The only way that it can be changed, and I can shout about it, and I'm get, I've already got hair, you know, powered up about it, but I can shout <laughs> up about it as as much as I like. I'm afraid I can only do my little bit. It's right. going to take somebody in a bigger bigger seat than I sit in and to change something. Your little bit is what? Tell us what you do on your well, website. Well, what I've decided to do is I've just taken all my stuff off off the digital domain completely, okay. and the 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 shop. You go to for Elio Pace's music is, is eliopace.com, mm-hmm. and you can buy my CD. And I tell you what, I've done also on there. You can buy the, you can buy all my music, and people say, "Oh, okay. Well, you've got a monopoly on your m- material." No, I haven't. You can buy and you can choose three prices to buy my CD at. Okay. You want to buy it for ten dollars, twelve, or fifteen, or whatever it is. You choose. So. Yes, you can shop around on Amazon and you can shop around on here and there or, 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 or whatever it is. So now I've, you can just come to my shop and shop around. If you fancy paying £15 for my DVD, you can. It's almost like an honor system sort of right. thing. Right. Like that's you how I keep describing it. You want to yes. pay £12 for it, pay £12. I and literally I, love him. I know. <laughs> and you guys I knew, knew that, right? right? And yeah. I can tell you. <laughs> you knew I, I would. I can tell you yeah, that's that great. I can tell you this. It works. Because the fans want to support you yeah. and they go to your website and then once people realize i mean the amount of emails and texts and messages i get where's your music gone off spotify where's it gone you know your music was on there you know my playlist <laughs> your song's missing at christmas now where is it uh, you know bit by bit i'm saying it's a pound one right. pound it's one dollar if you want it you go there. You can download it from there. You can buy it digitally on my website, yep. or you can order it in physical form, and it will be on your front door tomorrow. Uh, so yeah. yeah, it is like the honor system. I I think it's a great idea. I, I love think it. It's a great idea. I really. In do. this day and age of PayPal, uh, not PayPal, um, GoFundMe and and Patreon, yeah. all those all those well, uh, you know platforms what? where people just throw it out there. I, just I, pay I, a little bit more. Like they should just pay a little bit more to, you to you guys. You don't have to pay. You don't pay a little bit more. You pay exactly what you would pay Amazon. Right. right. No, I don't mean but you. I mean like Spotify or, or iTunes. Like just pay these artists just a little bit more. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's not going to kill you. Just just value them. You, you know, know? Um, Smokey Robinson. There's a, I, 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 can't, I can't. I don't know the exact facts of this case. So I'm going to get some of this wrong. But. Smokey Robinson's lawyer sent an invoice to 
Spotify for something like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that month or something. Because they figured, because they worked out, they went, how many? So they're advertising, you know, oh, you've had a t- 20 million streams or whatever right. it is, right? Right. And he's gone, how much money are we getting from them? And he's went, nothing. So here you go then, 20 million streams at nine ninety nine for how many people in the, how many subscribers? Eight billion, right? Okay, that makes it 250,000. There's my invoice. <clears throat> and they wrote back and went, will you accept 12, right? 12,000. And he went, no. So they took him to court. Wow. And this is this case this, is going on this, now? And this was, um, uh, uh, and, and this was, yeah, yeah, no, the case finished. And he won because it was something to do with, something to do with the copyright law. Because all of Smokey Robinson's material is out of copyright or something the like this. The 50-year thing, it's That yeah. crazy thing. And it's been changed recently yes. by the government. Yes. But, but before that, it was something else. So they would, you know, someone was, someone was making oh, yeah. millions of dollars <clears throat> off him. the back of people mm-hmm. like Smokey Robinson, and he called them up on it. It happened, uh, the Beatles too, because that 50-year... I, yeah. Something with yeah. the copyright laws after 50 yeah. years, it, like the, you lose all sorts of rights. You lose the rights to your own songs. And that's yeah. what happened Material. on iTunes. All of a sudden, I think it was six, in 2003, uh, 13, 2013, the 50th yeah. anniversary of all the Beatles, uh, at least when they were starting out, all this stuff started popping up on iTunes. That's right. Stuff that they weren't getting paid for, stuff they had, you know, that they couldn't stop from even being released. And yeah. then same thing they went to court and yeah there they, are they, a lot of artists who have taken a lot of big artists who have <clears> taken <throat> their music off some of them have put it back on again yeah now all i can deduce from that is that a deal has That's been made. made right right now you know because well they're not going to go back for the same because <clears throat> because if people like deal. taylor swift and the beatles decide to take their stuff off spotify somebody will listen Mm-hmm. Exactly, right. but but what happens is Spotify start losing uh, cr- uh, their credentials. All of a sudden, you know, nobody wants to be on Spotify, so nobody's going right. to start paying the nine ninety nine to be to listen to all their music. Right. So I'm sure they've made some big deals in the background. Mm-hmm. They go, Look, please, we need you to stay. We need you to stay because if we stay, you know, yeah, that the big guys are getting as paid. The envelope and that, comes that, under the table. That's kind of my know. fear is know. that if they do change the laws, I bet you, or, the, or how they do things, my fear is that they'll only do it for like the really big stars and it's the little guys coming up or the ones that are yeah. paying for their own stuff i yeah. just think it's just going to be bad for them and yeah. it's sad just just change the way you pay people right that's as simple as that i'm not saying let's get rid of streaming no yeah. it's fantastic <laughs> well, the problem is it's been going on for so long and they're so happy making the extra money yeah. that until people stand up and shout about it well they're just going to keep getting away with but it But robin the thing is here i am 12 years on from having had my first stuff on digital domain and here i am shouting about it because right. it's taken me this long to go not, wait a minute <laughs> not to yeah to fathom it out to go hold on is this okay let's just go with it let's just, just keep up with the modern technology right. and but then you end up hold on no it's crooked S- math. Someone is trying to stick something up me here. And mm-hmm. and and, <laughs> and, I've, n- brown, and I've now found out. Eliopace.com that, okay. is the place and only place to buy anything to do with me. That's okay. the way I have it now. Even, well, now, right. now you have, are you on Facebook? Is there like a calendar on Facebook? There's, Not buying merchandise, that's, but. That's a good question. Um, I have a, a page on Facebook, the Elio Pace musician okay. page it's there okay um it's all there everything and they get tickets for your ticket. show like th- there's a link on your page yeah, they don't you go, yeah they don't t- actually buy the tickets from you they not from the, me they right, go but straight but to the, the links. Venues. Right. Yeah, yeah the links all are all okay. you go it's to all the there venues. right um, what did you think i would do at this moment well i always say to you you know <laughs> banana rama don't you yes you know <laughs> delbert mcclinton yes and i must have just said to you you know billy vera and you went of course i do like, as you always do but then i mentioned that song uh, you know more about him than i the guy is, is originally is from new york yeah. but i yeah i only know this really so you said to me well you should you should get him on your show i said you need to get him because i'm show. i'm always emailing and making calls trying to get anybody and everybody on this sh- on this show so um, still working on Mickey Dolan's, by the way. Still, <laughs> that, that's like my quest now. That's um, a dream. No, it wasn't, but now it is because <laughs> I, because I've just had so many conversations with his management, and I seem to be getting nowhere. So, um, <laughs> so Elio suggested Billy Vera, and I'm like, oh, why not? He's again, he's not. No, he's no. not big here. So I figured, no. you know, let's give it a shot. 
I probably have a better shot with somebody like him. <laughs> so I, I looked him up. I emailed him through his website. I, I think it was the same day. I might have even been within the hour. I got an email back from him. Oh, I'd love to do your show. When are you on? I said, oh, please come into the studio. It'll be great. He doesn't. He's not. He lives in L.A. <clears throat> okay. So he said, flat out, call me one day and, and we'll do this. That was back in January. Okay. So now the time's coming that they're coming here. Yeah. I never responded to him back oh, in January. Oh, my goodness. So I responded to him just last week. And I said, you know, thank you so much for being willing to do this interview. Are you available June 20th? You know, I know it's, you know, we call you at 12. I said, I know it's only 9 o'clock your time, but is that fine? He wrote back, oh, yeah, that's no problem. I'll be up. Okay. So I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I figured this would be a nice surprise. They're all sitting here. And we'll make the call. So last night we're going to we're going to bed. Yes. Not, not together. Yes. But we're going to bed. <laughs> well, and we had, I mean, we spent the whole day yeah, together. Yeah. And, and, we we've, and we've not mentioned Billy Vera right, that's what I'm since saying. January. Was, right. So here I am, 30 seconds from walking away from each other, being done for the day, and sure enough, hey, whatever happened to contacting Billy Vera? <gasps> And That's like, a terrible accent. Yes, it is. That was the worst. That's the, the worst. worst. <laughs> and I immediately was like, I couldn't oh. even, I couldn't even fake you couldn't it. Couldn't hold I, it. No, he no, like, couldn't. What kind of actor are you? A oh, bad one. Good. So <laughs> I go. Uh, Welcome he, to the club. He go, I go. You just ruined my surprise. He goes, what you mean? <laughs> no, <just like> that. <laughs> he didn't say it like that. No, what, he, what he you said mean? it just like that. What you mean? What, what you mean? What you mean? <laughs> did, did I? Did I hear you correctly? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a pirate. pirate. <laughs> Arr. Arr. <laughs> Don't be pulling my leg. Get me that Billy Vera, mate. Arg. I did, I did, I did, I did. So, <laughs> so I said, damn it, Elio, you ruined my surprise. It's all set up. We're going to call him. Get out of the house. He goes, are you joking? I said, no, I'm not joking. Right. He goes, surely you're joking. I said, no, I'm not joking. Oh, and don't call me Shirley. He goes, <laughs> <"Don't call me> <laughs> Shirley. <laughs> and then he goes, shut up. Oh, that he, well, That's a bit rude. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant affectionately. Oh, okay. That is something he says often, right? Yeah. Shut up. Shut up. Shut shut up. up. No way. Get yeah. it. Let's like, get out. No way. Yeah, no yeah. way. You're right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I said, I'm not shutting up. It is the truth. So we uh, we are gonna. I have his phone number here. We're gonna you call William Vera. We are gonna call mm. William Vera. That's what his this mom guy's. Calls an, him. I'm sorry. This guy's an American icon. He's an American. Yeah. Sally's gonna pick up the phone for us. I think right you've there. got the. This is what the biggest guest you've ever had on your show no. ever. Just about to happen. Elio is. Elio is. Elio. And Elio. then Billy J. Kramer's probably second. And a no, no Jamie's second. second. <laughs> oh, Amy's second. Umberto Pace's third. <laughs> Umberto <laughs> Pace. Oh, I love friend. saying it like that. You are brilliant. Like that. Huh? We should call Linda Bard. She can speak Italian. To her. Oh, yeah. We should do that. And she does good. Coffee. We should call my grandmother. Oh, she's not. Is it happening? This guy better be awake. <laughs> He's probably peeing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Hello. Hi there. Is this Billy Vera? It is. Hey, Billy Vera. This is Tony Walker. We were emailing about uh, the radio show that I do in New York. I was just about to. And very nice. Uh, so uh, you're just about to. So do we interrupt you? you? You just get up to pee or something? We're good? No, I was just about to interrupt you wearing where the fuck you were. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, the guys got up for this, and we're 10 minutes late. Well, we, we, well, we told, I told you about uh, Elio Pace. We, he fainted when we told him we were calling you. So, uh, so we had to revive him and then get, get him up and uh, get, get, get call you. So this is a real pleasure to speak with you, sir, and we really appreciate your time. My pleasure to be here. Uh, absolutely. And uh, Elio Pace, this is Billy Vera. Billy Hello. Vera, Elio Pace. Billy, my name's Elio Pace, and it's an absolute mm. pleasure to speak to you. Well, nice to meet you, Elio. Oh, wow. I, honestly, <laughs> I, I don't know where to start. I mean, I'm just such a massive fan of yours musically, uh, your voice, your songs, everything you stand for. It's just a, a pleasure to meet you. I've discovered your music when I was at Leeds College of Music. I'm 50 one years old now oh you're a mere child uh, <laughs> <laughs> but i was discovered your music a friend of mine uh who was a fellow music student of mine called charlotte she had recently t returned from new york we were 21 years old i was at leeds college of music and she came back and uh she came back and she said elio I've, I've 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 picked up a cassette in new york i was in a, a record shop and i picked up a cassette and you've got to hear this you're gonna love this and it was Billy Vera and the Beaters uh, by request, the live album. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and she said, listen to this song. And she put on, someone will school you, someone will yes. cool you. <laughs> awesome. And I tell you what, I was converted. And from then on, I was like, this guy's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's a pleasure oh, to meet thank you. Thank you. That's one of my favorites, too. Wow. You know, you know it's, I remember writing it. I had just moved to L.A. in 1979. And I and I had a job writing songs for Warner Brothers. Right. It locked me in this little room with no windows and just a little piano there. Right. So I'm fooling around on the piano one day, and and I I, I had never played Louie Louie before. Right. And so I was trying to figure out the not trying this easy, but I figured out the chords to it. And then I, 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 I said, let me alter the rhythm instead of da 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 Yes. Da, 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 da. I said, da 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 So I did that. And then at the time, I had also been fooling around with a lick from uh, Professor Longhair. Wow. Yes, yes. And and that's the lick that comes between verses. There, I love that. Lick. Only it's my version of it. You know? is, yeah. It's, so is that you? That's not. Is that you playing? It's not you on the record on that. No, 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 no. It's not me. But I mean, I showed him what I wanted him to play. You know? That that lick you're talking about for me as a piano player, which is what I've done professionally for 31 years as yeah. a singer. I'm a songwriter as well. Um, that piano lick you're talking about was one of those moments in my career that you add color that i added color and variety to my playing just because of that lick wow wow cool, i tell you it, it upped my vocabulary as a piano <laughs> player really i can't tell you well i i'll tell you where i stole it from uh, or i adapted it from uh, uh from a, a professor longhair record called big chief i yeah. know big chief yep, yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. I always, you know, whenever I play with my big band, yeah, I, I have a big eighteen-piece band. Sometimes I yeah. play with, and they're all like the best jazz guys from Los Angeles. And and I sometimes I go up on the piano at Soundcheck and I'll play that lick, oh. and and they're all impressed because it's. I mean, I'm not a great piano player by any means, well, but you I are, did you're... learn that lick, and it, it impresses these jazz guys. You're a very good piano player, Billy. You're being very, very <laughs> modest. And, but the lyric is fantastic as well. It's just so, it's so quirky and clever. And the groove, the groove of the band on that. He's, he, I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, Tony's yeah. put it on live in the background here. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's, and so the listeners are hearing a little bit as we're talking. It's just so funky, I, I, honestly. Uh, it's, and, and the rest of the album, you know, and then I went and bought Retro, Retro Nouveau, which I Retro loved. Nuevo, yeah. Uh, yeah, which I loved as well. It's just fantastic. Oh, thank you. Songs. That was produced by the great Tom Dowd. Was it really? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tommy had been a friend of mine from years ago when I, in the 60s when I was on Atlantic Records. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. I mean, there's a, there's, um, going back to the live album, At This Moment, which uh, when, when we spoke about you earlier on, Eric, who's also uh, presenting, who's one of the main presenters here, uh, told us a great story about at this moment and how you can tell him. This All right. Hi, Billy. How are you? Hey. <laughs> All right. So I was in eighth. I was in eighth grade at the time, and I actually. What do we come on? What's do we settle on the word? Lip synced. Lip synced. Uh, sure. We'll I lip synced that. that song to a girl I wanted to ask out. Oh, I bet she went out with you too. It, she <laughs> certainly <laughs> did. We, she certainly did. Um, but I did it in front of her whole cheerleading squad too. Oh. Yeah, I bet they all wanted to go out with you. After that. I don't think so. <laughs> even the guys. <laughs> and then my, you know, the foot, my football buddies came in with me, and they were all laughing. They thought I was crazy, but <laughs> I played the. They played the song. I lip sang it to her. I asked her if she'd go out with me. She said yes, and then she broke up with me a year later. So. Well, that's because well, of the that's song. What that's what she was supposed to do. That I wrote the song about, you know? Oh, that's what. See, yeah, Sally just informed me that I it's know. actually about a breakup. He, he didn't understand what it was about. I'm like, you sang a song to a girl that that is supposed to dump you and you're supposed to be okay about it <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but i didn't sync it I, I didn't sing it i just lip synced it i, I couldn't sing like you or remember the words so yeah. billy <laughs> billy this is elio again here um so it was around about i'm gonna say 1993 and i'm sat in front of the television uh british television uh, bbc one or itv and the raw variety show was on 
That's where the Queen or one of the royal family attends a big television show. It's a massive variety show. The Beatles did it back in the 60s, oh. and the Stones. It's called the Royal Variety <coughs> Show. It's live on telly from the London Palladium or one of the big theatres. And the headline guest on this show that night was Tom Jones. I'm sitting. Oh, next yeah, he recorded it too. Well, you know, this later. is it. And I'm sitting next to my dad here. My dad is from Naples, um, and uh, he's 79, and he's his first trip to America ever. Uh, two days ago, he landed in America for the first time in his life. And um, he's a massive Tom Jones fan. So I'm watching the television and Tom Jones comes on. Da, 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 he does. It's not unusual. He did yeah, something. Yeah. And then the piano intro for at this moment came on. And I remember going, what? What? <laughs> what? He's just about to sing. And, and nobody, nobody knew the song. Right. I'm sorry to say in Britain because it. it no, I know it didn't sell in Britain. It wasn't a hit in Britain, but no. I knew it for about four years f by this point. And Tom Jones opened his mouth and he, what would you think? And it's like, I'm like, oh, my God, Tom Jones is singing at this moment. <laughs> I remember. And I went and I've got that performance on the VHS cassette in Britain somewhere. And I'm going to fish it out one day and put it on YouTube for you. But. Um, yeah, it, it's well. There, there's a couple of versions of him singing it live on on YouTube. Oh, they, there are. At least there used to be. Yeah, yeah, but there's not the one from that Royal Variety performance because I looked it up and I was trying to show my girlfriend Amy this because we had a we had a whole Billy Vera evening one night. <laughs> um, on oh, your poor girlfriend. <laughs> oh no, no, it was fantastic. I loved it. Oh, good. You're awesome. Oh, my gosh. Honestly. So I love jazz and big band and kind of funky stuff. And I also like rock and roll as well. Uh -huh. So for you and the way you combine all those elements, I mean, I and I hadn't heard your stuff before. I was in seventh heaven. Just loved it. You're amazing. Thank you, Amy. Well, you know, you, you should search. If you like big band, you should search out my big band album. Yeah, I will. It, it's called Billy Vera Big Band Jazz. Oh, wow. I can't wait. Oh, can't wait, on, to, on can't Amazon, wait to hear yeah. it. And if, if you want, you can check out Elio Pace on YouTube. And in Amy here, his girlfriend, she's with uh, a band called the D-Day Darlings, uh, which is just phenomenal. Phenomenal. I love the name. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do things. Um, they, 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 well, you can tell Nostalgic. Them. It's a lot uh, of... You guys got to say World War II songs? That's the one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in fact, we just went over to Normandy for the 75th oh, anniversary with How about wonderful. 300 veterans. And it was... Just an absolute privilege, as you oh, can imagine. Man, and they told a lot of tears. There yeah, were a lot of tears and a lot of stories and a lot of comradeship. And yeah, it was quite incredible. Well, we have a lot to thank the Americans for because, yeah, um, yeah. yeah if it wasn't for the fact that you joined, you're the, welcome. You joined <laughs> the war. Yeah, our boys, our boys went over there and we lost a lot of them that first day. That's yeah. very yeah. true, yeah. very true. But Billy, you're so. Um, just tell us, because I know a lot of this, but your your main influences as a singer, what what are they, as a singer? Well, I my my favorites growing up, you know, being a New York boy, uh, I loved Frankie Lyman. Oh wow! Oh wow! You know, I loved him, and uh, and also there was a singer who you might not have heard called Jesse Belvin. No, I don't know Jenny. Jesse. Jesse had a great song. A masterpiece called uh, "Good Night, My Love." Right. Good night, my love. Pleasant dreams and sleep tight, my love. Oh, nice. May tomorrow be sunny and bright. Great, great, great singer. Wow. And he was, he was, he he got picked up by RCA after that, and he had one hit, and he he made a magnificent uh, jazz pop album called "Mr. Easy." And it, unfortunately, he, he died in an auto accident with oh. his wife, and uh, and the album came out posthumously. Right. Uh, but he was a great favorite of mine. Ray Charles is a great favorite. Yes. Uh, although yes. I don't, I never wanted to try to sing like him no. or sound like him because, no. you know, that's not smart. No. <laughs> <laughs> the world doesn't need another Ray Charles. No, but I'm I'm going to say I don't want to embarrass you, but you are. <sighs> You are just one of the most incredible vocalists America has ever produced. Wow. So, so the fact that you uh, cite these people that you've just mentioned, Jesse Belvin and Ray Charles, I, I honestly believe, um, Billy, um, that you're up there with them because your vocal phrasing, the tone of your voice, your tuning, um, the rhythm, the funkiness, the groove in your voice is, oh man, honestly... You're, you're without a doubt one of my all-time favorite singers, and I would hold. That really, that really, 
Makes me feel good to this morning, man. Thank no, you so no, much. No, it's true. And now I have to ask: the documentary that it was that is being made was being made. Uh, it's, it's out. It's out. It's on Amazon. Now. Fantastic. Right. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Because I was, I had my eye on that, and uh, and when Tony and, then, and I, I and then I got another a new album too, also. Yeah. Called Timeless. Timeless. Yeah. Yeah. Which. Yeah. I mean, I've I've got a. That's bit back of, to the old Beaters style. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. And what's and what's the name of the uh, documentary? Uh, Harlem to Hollywood, the same as my book. Okay. And I, there, uh, people were after me for years. Why don't you write a memoir? Why don't you write? And I, I said oh, I don't want to. I don't. And finally, I got tired of people bugging me, and I <laughs> and I finally wrote it. And people really seemed to like it. So I'm not surprised. And and there are far greater people than me that have said exactly the same that I've, that I've just said about you. There are. That, you know, people. I hope. It, I hope you know, Billy, that people in the know, know. <laughs> they know. They know. You know, it's a funny thing you you say that because the director of the documentary Harlem to Hollywood, uh, a fellow named Alan Swire, he he wrote the Buddy Holly story wow. movie and things like that. And he he his whole premise. He said he said you know every every documentary needs an angle, and he said my angle that I believe, he said, Billy Vera is the most f famous person that nobody ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, unfortunately, and I think that's the, one of the biggest crimes of our industry. I'm not saying there aren't people out there that don't deserve the fame, but there are certainly people out there like you who have just been consistently, it's not like you're not, you're not like a one-hit wonder. You have been doing this consistently up there like for me you know I, I hold you up against people like Billy Joel because Billy Joel is my ultimate so singer songwriter hero mm. and and for me he consistently hit it knocked it out of the park as you say in this country um, he, yeah. he's just he, album after album uh, song after song you know uh, and, and he stuck it he stuck at 12 albums for me you're the same Everything you've ever done is full of musical integrity. It's you employ musicians, you use musicians. There's there's humor. There's just it's, honestly, I think you're one of the greatest ever. End of. Well, thank you. A and you know, I I I've made peace with, you know, the fact that maybe I'll never, you know, be famous, famous, famous. Be but I said, you know, a lot of my heroes uh, are like that. Yeah. You know, they 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 remain pure, <laughs> and and they they make music that satisfies them, uh, if not record companies. <laughs> Amen. A and you got some pimply faced jerk as first girlfriend. Oh. So there you go. Right. So that that's a, that, that's oh. that's always a good thing too. <laughs> there sure you go. <laughs> no, well, that's beautifully said, and what you've just said is so massively important because that. That being true and satisfying yourself as as an artist first, if you can get if you can go to your grave knowing that what you have left behind came all of it came from your heart, I think that's the greatest achievement more than houses and cars and fame and right. You uh, might not yeah. yeah. Even if you're not a household name, you're still doing what you love and being able to support your family at the same time. And, and it, I, I mean, that's well, the that's dream it. right as there. As long as you you know the, I, I figured out about 25 years ago or so, you know that. To, to make the kind of music I want to make, I, I'm going to have to find other ways of making a living because I also don't want to be poor. I've been I've been poor, sure, mm. and and I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I fell into totally by accident uh, the field of voiceovers. Yeah. Oh. My dad was an announcer mm. on uh, NBC for 35 years. Billy McCord. York. Yeah, Bill McCord, and and, uh, and so I, I was doing a little radio show playing, you know, old R and B records every once a week, and somebody left a note in my mailbox there, said uh, he has an interesting voice. You believe him when he talks? Would he be interested in doing voiceovers? So I I called up, you know, I said, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try it. My dad did it, you know, yeah. and the first one I did was for Nissan the automobile yeah right and boy it took off and I, I made more money doing that Amazing. than I ever made in music <laughs> wow. you know by far 
but so, you're you still know, doing that, and then producing. You know, I produced four Lou Rawls albums. Oh, Did wow. you? Yeah, yeah. Lou yeah, Rawls. we kind of brought his career back. Actually, he had been making these dopey Vegas disco albums. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah. And so Bruce Lundvall, the last of the great record men, uh, signed him to Blue Note Records, wow. the jazz label. Yeah. And he asked me and my friend to to produce him. He said, but don't don't make any more of those records. He said. Take Blue back to his roots. Wow. You know, mm-hmm. take him back to the kind of music that people loved him for in the beginning. Jazz, blues, you know. Yeah. Another So we singer. did that. And I, you know, and I got a pretty good repertoire in my brain of songs. Hit, hit of the, you You're know. being very modest. You're a musical historian. <laughs> so you, what you don't know about music is not worth knowing. And, and, <laughs> and, I, and Tony, Tony Walker is one of those guys as well. So you'd... You'd be, you know, uh, you're in good company there. Yeah, so, you know, I picked some good songs for him, and, and then I, he did, you know, seven of mine all over, the la- over the course of the yeah. albums we made. Amazing. And uh, we got to bring in cool people, you know, Ray Charles. I got to do a du- du- duet with Ray. Wow. And, nice. I wow. brought in George Benson, wow. you know, to, to play guitar on one of my songs. Amazing. With him and, you know, it was, it was really a wonderful experience, and got to use great musicians like Richard T. and wow. Cornell Dupree and wow. Hank Crawford and Stanley Turrentine and you know Fathead Newman. I mean, all these wonderful musicians wanted to help Lou make a comeback. Amazing. And so the first album we did with him went to number one on the jazz charts. Amazing. And uh, and and so we continued to have success until I made the last album. That of his lifetime, by that time his uh, his manager was having trouble getting him a record deal. Lou Rawls, can you imagine? No, I know it's Crazy incredible. Wow. And and so I said, well, he asked me if I had any ideas. I said, well, I'm not I'm not above using a gimmick. How about Old Brown Eyes sings Old Blue Eyes? Hey, that's clever. And so we did all Sinatra songs, and wow. I brought in the great Benny Golson, you know, from the Jazz Tet. To wow. Write the charts. Wow. And, uh, and that album stayed on the jazz charts for six months, you know. And Amazing. Then Lou died, you know, yeah. sadly. But what a legacy you're, th- you have, Billy, you know, what, you know, all the stuff. And, and what that screams to me, you talk about everybody wanted to help Lou Rawls, but it's because they know you're at the helm, you know. Um, it's, it's your reputation that, uh, that gave Lou, obviously, a, a twilight, some fantastic last years, you know. So congratulations on that. Yeah, well, thank you. It was, it was really, you know, rewarding. And, so, so anyway. what about so what about gigging? What about touring? Do you have you ever, have you have you, I'm sorry about this ignorance here, but have you ever performed in in Britain? No, I, I the only place I, that that ever wanted me over there was uh, the Netherlands. Okay, I went over. There. I didn't even tour. I just did. A, I did a bunch of TV shows over there. Cause right. My records, for some reason, my records that did not sell in Great Britain, always sold in the Netherlands, in Holland, which is, yeah. you know, a tiny country, but, yeah, yeah. you know, for some reason they, they, they get what I do, yeah, yeah. And so I went over there. Yeah, it's but a big I, rivalry. They, uh, anything that's popular in the, in the Netherlands, the United Kingdom thumbs their nose at. They don't. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, they don't want anything to do no. with the, no, ne- it's not. the nether people. No, it's not. What no. do they call them, the nether people? The ne- yeah, no, they don't oh, call them oh, the okay. nether people. <laughs> Ignore him. But, um, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, well, I'm I'm I apologise on behalf of the whole of Britain and the British British media and industry <laughs> that that uh, it was they, a big part of the Brexit because all of Europe was well, fighting know, they, over they uh, do like me uh, over in, Billy they, Vera. They do like me over there for my my uh, article writing. You know, I, I I write a lot of articles for this magazine over there called uh, Blues and Rhythm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I get to I get to show off my. <laughs> well, I hope I hope you. Uh, I mean, I know you, you must know there are people, there are millions of people like me, who you've never heard of, who uh, aren't famous, famous, famous. But as long as you know that that you have touched with your fantastic talent, people like me that you've never heard of, and just rest knowing that uh, mm. e- e- just because you know. Unfortunately, you, you may, uh, you know, media-wise, not have climbed the heights of Billy Joel or Tom Jones. Mm-hmm. That means nothing, because you've affected musicians like me all over the world for years and years and years. Thank you. I'll tell you one thing. I made peace long ago. 
you know, I just said, you know, I do what I do, and the people that, that know what I do like it. And, and uh, you know, I, I, one of the problems has been I, I like to use good musicians. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> you can't tour with musicians of that caliber no. without being able to pay them what they deserve. Yes. Yep. And and that means, you know, if you're a 22-year-old band, four guys that want to drive yep. around in a van and sleep in the same room, That's it. you can tour. That's it. I mean, even with a number one record, the kind of gigs you're offered are opening up for a big star and for very little money. Yep. But I had eight guys with me and two crew guys, and each guy had to have his own room, and I had to pay them a you know, a decent yep. salary. And yep. I couldn't afford it. No, no. You know, I so I play locally in California. I go to New York once a year and play there. Do you? Yeah. Where do you play? There's a club there called Iridium. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love the Iridium. Yeah. Yeah, I play there, and uh, we do well there. I, I, I've, I've done there with the big band, and I can, there I can use local musicians. Yeah. It's a great know, place. There's, there's a lot of really good young jazz guys I can get a salary that I don't lose too much money on the gigs. No. Do you still have Do you still have family here in New York? No, everybody's passed away, but me. But I do have uh, I do have a lot of my old friends from school, from high school, and grade school that, that I, okay. I always go see them. Okay, when I'm, when I'm there, I, you know, I, there's, there's, there's something about old friends that yeah, just. Yeah. Yeah. Makes you feel good. Yeah, absolutely. When are you back in New York then? Well, I was just there uh, in, when was I there? In August, was it? Okay. I guess it was so you're due to one. come back in 2019. I am yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, but I, 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 I stay with either my friend up in Stanford, Connecticut, or I got another friend in Manhattan. I stay at his place. Great. And, but, uh, but you'll make, and you'll make a stop here in the studio with us that day. That sounds good to me. <laughs> Yay! Yay. That, that's good to me, yeah. It's, it's I got, and I always, either I go to Rayo's and eat up there <laughs> in, uh, in, in East Harlem, or there's another Italian restaurant I like to go to in, in Harlem called Patsy's. Oh, sure. sure. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. The, okay. The, but it's the Patsy's on 118th Street. Not the one on 56th, right? No, no, that's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the other one in Patsy's, man, it's it's like old school Italian, man. Yeah, and yeah. They got a they got a picture, life size picture of Sinatra on the wall. Wow, <laughs> perfect. My dad is sitting yeah. next to me, as I say, and uh, let's go together. We're going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Umberto Pace, his name is, and. Um, We've been looking for, well, Tony recommended exactly the restaurant you're talking about for an experience like that. I want to take my dad to a proper Italian, American Italian experience run by Italians, and it looks like Patsy's might be the one. Patsy's is good. Rayo's is hard to get into anymore because, you know, it's all the all the big shots in, in okay. New York go, you know, they, this guy has a table every Tuesday night, and that guy's got a table every Wednesday night, you know, and... and so it's booked like months in advance. Right. But Patsy's you can get into. It's it's 118th Street and 1st Avenue. So. Okay, thank you. All right. Did you, yeah, being from, uh, what, you were from Westchester originally, correct? Yeah, White Plains. White Plains. Did you ever go to uh, Dominic's on Arthur Avenue in the Bronx? I've been to a restaurant on Arthur Avenue okay. in the Bronx, yeah. Uh, now, that's, now that's a fun experience because you walk in, no menus, here's what we have today, how much do you want? Here's a <laughs> bottle of wine. Here's a bottle of Zambuca. Whatever. <laughs> then they take right, the bottle right, when you're right. done. They're like, uh, all right, you drank that much, and they just they don't even get they don't even give you a bill. They just tell you how much it is and cash right there on the table. Cash? No, you don't want to pay no taxes, man. Th that's it, Dominic's. Uh, <laughs> Dominic's on out there. No, no, they no, legally they pay taxes. Right. I know that for a fact. Okay. <laughs> the, oh, okay. But no, we're on the air. I can't say that. So <laughs> the um, <laughs> but Dominic, if you next time you're in, try Dominic's on Arthur Avenue. That sounds good to me. I will get somebody to drive me up there, yeah. <laughs> you got Absolutely. It. All right, Billy Vera, the new album is Timeless, and the, uh, the look for the documentary on Netflix. Billy, we really appreciate your time. That was very nice of you this morning. Well, thank you for having me on your show, and thank you, Elio. Man, I, I wish you all the best luck in the world. Thank you. And uh, is it Amy? Yeah, that's Amy, right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Billy. And the, and the 
The D-Day Dolly. The D-Day Dolly. Dolly. D-Day Dolly. <laughs> right, Elio's actually in town because he's been nominated for an Independent Music Award. Uh, oh, the, wow. The ceremony is this weekend. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank so you. Thank you. Win, for him. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. Billy Vera again. Thank you so much, Billy. buddy. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much, Billy. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Wow, cool. Billy Vera. Nice job, Tony. Will you still love me? Because you go from Scotland to Wales and everybody's got a little bit of a different accent. Oh, yeah. Little bit? It's, you couldn't... Oh, my gosh. Amy, please, to do me. it. What? Do, do, do help. Do We've just heard Scotland, so but Wales is yeah. more... Uh, so my mother's from Llanelli, from South Wales, oh, and uh, yeah. I, I'm camping it up a little bit now, really. But uh, they've got very strong accents, and it mm. really it's very, very different to Scotland. It, wow, it's completely different. It is yeah. now. Do now do Scottish. Uh, uh, Scottish. Right, so it's we've just heard uh, we've just heard Wallace talking to us about his wife, and that's Scotland, and it's just completely different. Yeah, I, I was having a hard time understanding what he was wow. saying. Oh, but he has no. a soft. Oh, it's beautiful. Know, oh, not, yeah. So if you want to speak to some people from from Glasgow and places like that, sometimes it takes you a long time to, saying, to, right? to tune in to the accent. Now, yeah, I, and Ireland's got their sep- another the Irish. accent. Oh, well, no, I find Irish quite Southern? tricky, actually. Southern? Okay. Ireland. Or I can do a little bit of Southern mm. Irish, but I definitely can't do uh, Northern Irish. It's is particularly hard. Wow. Now do so ca- I, I apologize Now do Cajun, Louisiana. <laughs> 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 Please, you do it. What, you teach uh, me. I can't do it. I, I don't even know what they say. If you have a very heavy Cajun accent, oh, yeah. you, you can't understand what they're no, saying because right, right. it's got French in it, it's got oh, English, and you wow. and you sit there. Oh, I don't even know that they're speaking English sometimes. Lovely. That's how heavy it is. It's give it, really give us some Cockney. Oh, well, you need to talk to uh, Elio, really, about Cockney. And I mean, you know, he was brought up a bit more around that area, really, compared to me. I'm, I'm from the northwest, you see, right up there, in, uh, on the, quite, quite near <laughs> to... Uh, oh, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Now do New York. Oh, no, I can't do that. As if you can do New York in New York. Oh, geez, talk to hey, Elio. You're talking to me? Hey, what's going on? Let's have some cough. Yeah, Elio, I can hear. <laughs> <laughs> now the now the big moment. What's the big moment? Are you oh. ready? Oh, are what, you ready? What, is it? what are we singing? Venus? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> Banana Rama. Oh, wow. oh my god. All right. Are you oh. ready for this? Why not? Let's right. do Banana Rama. Are they a big band in, in she, Amy's <laughs> Amy <laughs> brought it up. Your choice? Amy brought it up. We're going to do this and then this I'm bringing so Joe in for a few minutes. I'm bringing so Joe in after this. All right. Oh, All right, here gosh. we go. Why are we not doing some jazz? Did Joe bring his guitar? He did not. Oh gosh. Oh, this is so cheesy band karaoke music, yes. isn't it? Right. When this song first came out, I thought it was your penis. <laughs> That's my little ad. <laughs> God is on the mountain top. Yeah, baby. Burning like a silver flame. <laughs> Some of the beauty and love. And Venus lies her name. She's got it Yeah, baby, she's got it I'm your Venus I'm your fire It's your desire Holy moly Well, I'm your Venus I'm your fire It's your desire Who happens with her crystal eyes Picking every man mad Pretty much Black as a dark night she was Got what no one else had Wow! She's got it <laughs> Yeah baby, she's got it I'm your Venus I'm your fire, it's your desire Well, I'm your Venus I'm your fire, it's your desire Woo! <laughs> you want me to sing after that? Oh no, I did not ask you to sing today. You did, did too. You made you said, "What song are you gonna sing? You gotta sing with Elio." And yeah, I, did. I said that the other day. But I didn't sing just now. I didn't invite you to sing along with that. Oh my goodness! Come on, this is your turn. Get out of here! <laughs> she's got it. Yeah, baby, she's got it. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. It's your desire. Not 
Wow. <laughs> How do you not fall in love with her every two seconds? <laughs> Who says I, d- I don't? Yeah, right. oh. I would tell you the, the, the uh, Leningrad, the chorus in Leningrad, they're a bunch of friends of mine. The the High choir, school. the yeah. Hicks School, uh, yeah. the Hicksville School Choir. Because I, I, I graduated the year prior, so a lot of those guys. Do you know how weird it is for me, Tony? <clears throat> tell me. Because I remember in 1989 listening to the album for the very first time when I went and bought it. Mm-hmm. Local shop, came back, laid on the floor, headphones on, my mum's record player in the corner. And I remember reading everything from cover to cover. Yeah. How weird it is for me to have grown up with the words Hicksville school choir right directed by chuck arnold chuck arnold to now at 51 years old all these 30 30 years later 30 years to be in hicks to, to be mates with people from <laughs> hicksville who know chuck, chuck arnold who were probably sang in the choir and is yeah it, that the, is great the, as the, the world the gets little, smaller that's what i'm saying <laughs> it's a, so, so, here. Joe? and you guys can Sing sitting like no, this. This is. No, yeah. Yeah. I thought you. I thought you were going to say you guys can. I don't know the song. Go, Joe. I mean, do the love part. There. What's that? You can hear it. I'll never ask you where you go. Too late. Too early. No, that's great. No. That's great. That was it. Yeah. After I leave you in the morning. We go our separate ways to separate situations. It's not that easy anymore. Today I do what must be done. I give my time to total strangers. Sorry. Hey, it's cool. <laughs> but now it feels as though the day goes on forever. More than it ever did before. Changed. I, that, that was it. Sorry. Yeah. I go I'm afraid we're getting older. I've never performed this. Yeah. Okay. So many broken hearts, so many lonely faces, so many lovers. Come and go. <laughs> I have my fears like every man. You go low. You're good at the low bit. Do the low bit. You'll have your tears like everyone. I can't remember what the harmony is. Today we'll be unsure Is this what we believe in? And wonder how can we go on? Until the night Until the night Oh, I just might make it Yeah. Wait, the best part's coming up. The best part's coming up. Oh, we got it. We got it. We got it.
Nothing is more? Nothing is more. You know? We got this far, we may as well do it. Right. This is not easy to make up as you're going along <laughs> if we've never true done it before. Go. True professional. Mm -hmm. When the sun goes down and the day is over, when the last of the light has gone. As they pour into the street, I will be getting closer. closer. As the cars turn their headlights on. As they're closing it down. We're gonna open it up. And while we're going to sleep, we'll just be starting to touch. I'm, I'm just, just beginning, beginning to feel. I'm, I'm just beginning to give. I'm just beginning to feel. I'm just beginning to live Before I leave you again Before the light of the dawn Before this evening can end I have been waiting so long Excellent. Oh my god We're going to do one last chorus Yeah. I want to sing Baby Shark <laughs> Billy Joel, ladies and gentlemen, come on. This is ridiculous. What a song. Screw that. Elio Pache and Joe DiGiorgio. Until the night. Until the night. Oh, I just might make it. Until the night. Until the night. Oh, I just keep holding on. Until the night when I see you again. Wow! Wow! That's, 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 that high part is. I'm sorry, Elliot. No, I, I mean, I'm sorry. That, I made that, that's moments so. though. That's yes, you did. Joe, yes. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful. You carried me along. You know it better than I do. Wow. I mean, seriously, I, I, really nice. I need to learn that one. The heck? <laughs> All right, for long form music video, Elio Pace, <laughs> the Billy O. Joel songbook, live. And Elizabeth Joan Kelly, music for the DMV. Cool. <laughs> and uh, Long Form Music Video Award goes to Elio Pace for yeah. the Congratulations to all of the winners tonight and making beautiful music and film. Congratulations. I'm going to tell you that honestly, this is the first award in my over 30 years of being in this career. And, uh, and this means the world to me. And I want to thank the IMA and the Independent Music Awards for everything it stands for. Uh, I've just been so moved by the fact that I'm involved with a company like this that, that speaks for independent artists like myself who uh, work really hard to get their music heard uh, in a world that is it's really most difficult to do anyway. It's been unbelievable coming over with my family. Uh, and uh, I just want to—I want to thank. First of all, I want to thank everybody involved in making this DVD and, and live album, uh, which took us two years to make. Uh, we've been touring for five years. The band who played on it, the guys who mixed it, who mastered it, the guys.
guys who, who created the artwork for it, and to all the fans who have travelled around Europe supporting this show, uh, to all of you, it's your reward. Um, I want to thank um, my family. I want to thank uh, my manager, Pete Jenkins, uh, without whom our victory wouldn't be standing here uh, accepting this. Uh, to all my friends, my American friends who are, have come along, Tony Walker, Sally, uh, John and MJ, and my girlfriend Amy, um, and my dad, who's on his first ever trip to the United States of America at 79 years old, and uh, he's just seen me pick this up. Mum, Juicy, Sandra, Gino, Neil, and Marcella. I want it. Thank you very much. Joining us now here at the Independent Music Awards is Elio Pace. He just won the IMA for Best Long Form Music Video for the Billy Joel Songbook. Elio, thank you so much for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. And I think you've won a couple other distinctions tonight. You came from England, which means you had to have been one of the people that have traveled the farthest to be here. So you got right, that going right, for you. Yeah, yeah. And you've also brought the largest cheering section. <laughs> So many fans that came all the way from all over, including England, to yeah. see you. That yeah. must make you feel good. Ah, and, and I've got my dad here, who's uh, who's just about to turn 79 on July the 4th. Can you believe that? Wow. And this is his very first trip to America in his life. So to have witnessed his son pick up his first award yeah. is something extremely special. My dad, Umberto Pace. Oh my God, I kind of want to talk to your dad. You can, <laughs> why not? Why not? Yeah. And I've got my manager, Pete Jenkins here. I have my, my girlfriend, Amy Rhiannon Worth. And I have uh, two of the best friends any person could ever want uh, in Tony Walker and Sally. And I have two people I've just met tonight who wanted to come to see the show, and that's John and MJ. So there we are. Man, that's that's so so excellent i want to hear all about this project yeah. this the long form music video you made which was a performance that you apparently tore europe with doing the billy Joel right. songbook that's right tell so, us a little listeners about it i created uh this show five years ago with um a, a man called matt daniel baker we wrote the concept of this show this isn't a tribute in that sense in the sense that i go out imitating billy joel I tell stories about Billy Joel. I sing the songs as close as I can without trying to do an imitation of Billy. I just love his music. In fact, I think Billy's songbook is the greatest songbook of all time. You're not going to get an argument on this side. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> it's it's okay. magnificent. There you go. So uh, that's not dissing anyone else's songbook, but for me, Billy's is the greatest of all time. Me and Matt wrote this show, uh, where, you know, and we, we had to go through those 12 incredible albums, and we created a two-hour commercial show with all of those incredible songs and hits, with some album tracks and a lot of stories. So people, I'm very passionate about how great this guy is. In fact, I think I'm more passionate about it than he is about his own career. But because I think this guy's music should never die. I think it's the greatest. And so therefore we, we took this show on the road in 2014. We did our very first, it was the inaugural tour, 70 Dates. Uh, and I, I knew, and the, in Britain this was, and, and when we started, I looked around and I thought, oh my word, we are the only people in the world to be traveling around a nation selling Billy Joel's music like this. So um, by the end of that first tour, we got a lovely gathering of fans. By the second tour, we were selling out everywhere we went. And we went for, we've gone for five years. It was, in the, it was at the end of the second tour in 2015 that I, uh, I succumbed to pressure from all around me, my band, my friends, family, my you know, the management saying, are you sure you don't want to record this show? I said, because I was like, <laughs> look, uh, you know, the world doesn't need another version of just the way you are. Billy's is, is the Mona Lisa. It's beautiful <laughs> as it is. Oh, but uh, you know, this is the way you do it is different. And the show is really cool and your stories. And, and I, I was like, okay. So we made the video, November the 2nd. We, we hired a film company, a television company to come in. They set up their 11 cameras around the place at the stables in Milton Keynes in Great Britain. It was a sold out crowd. Um, and we filmed the show live. And we stopped for two technical errors in the middle. Uh, uh, one of the cameras went down and power went down. But apart from that, we recorded the show as if I did it live. And then it took a couple of years. This is, this is what's important to me and why the Independent Music Awards for me is so special. Because had I had 
a team like, you know, of 28, 70 people working on this with me. This album would have, the DVD and the album would have been out in six, seven months. But I did it with myself, my small little team of editors, uh, video editing uh, was, was taken care of by Steve Tottingham at Big Small TV. Uh, Tony Draper mixed it. Nick Watson mastered it. Um, I did the editing of the audio. It took two and a half years to get this two and a half hour long concert footage to DVD and to the marketplace. So for this company, the Independent Music Awards, to have acknowledged that hard work, believe me, I'm so grateful to them. Uh, for, for I've had, This is the first award, Ryan, of my career. Wow. 30, over 30 years of making music, sometimes at the highest level, sometimes not so high, but just loving what I do as a singing, songwriter, piano player, my amazing band that have changed personnel over the years, but to have been, to have been brought to New York for my first award celebrating Billy Joel's music is one of the most special moments of my life. And I can't tell you how happy I am to be here for even a small part of it. Congratulations, Elio. Congratulations to all your wonderful family and friends for being here for you on this magnificent day. Awards was held in New York City Saturday night. Elio was up for Best Long Form Video for his DVD of the Billy Joel Songbook, and he won. He kicked ass. Yes. He came to New York and conquered. Elio Pace, congratulations, Thank pal. you very much. And on it's top amazing. of that, Thank you. on top of that, the man who announced that you won was Jim Brickman. The, do you I know, know that name. There you go. He's a name? piano player. Oh, he, yeah. He's, uh, he, he, does, he puts out his own stuff, but he's kind of known for playing with other people. Um, so that was kind of cool too, Never Jim Brickman, uh, and we met some cool yeah, uh, musicians. You were interviewed by uh, their podcast. Uh, it was just an amazing night. It was. It was some. I'm still high <clears> on <throat> it. I'm still buzzing. You know. I mean. Wonderful. You know. To, to come to bring Billy Joel's music It's like we have a phrase in England which is shipping coals to Newcastle, meaning Newcastle doesn't need an, any more coal. It was. It's, it's an old traditional phrase it's like america doesn't need an english italian to bring <laughs> over the, the uh, over the pond more billy joel there's enough right. people who love like billy joel department and, of redundancy and, and department you know what i mean so <laughs> th this was this is a, an amazing thing to come here to uh, to have been nominated was one thing to have won is off the scale congratulations thank Brown. you mate can i say hello to matt daniel of baker of course hello matt if you're listening matt i i, I want to say was uh, my writing partner for the billy joel songbook which has just won this award here in New York. And I'm uh, very proud of what we achieved. And uh, hello, mate. And I'm looking forward to having a drink with you when I see uh, you again. Nice. Pete Jenkins and Robbie Pache mm. and Amy Rannenworth, they're all, fl on, as we speak, flying back to England. We after should explain. I was supposed to be on that flight today with mm -hmm. my dad. Yes. Who's just had his first ever week in the United States of America. Well, you guys had a big fight, and you said, screw it, I'm staying here. <laughs> screw you. I'll see no. you to the gate. So, uh, and my, my darling girlfriend, Amy, is with them, and Pete, my manager, they, they flew back. That's why Tony's very kindly, um, that's why I'm here, because I wasn't supposed to be here today. But um, I'm actually flying off to Alaska tomorrow. Beautiful. I've been asked to go and do a gig, nice. so I'm going to Alaska tomorrow. So I had one more day in New York. and. Had to lose him, but uh, he's got his own career now. And he's really doing well in, in Europe, and he's such a great artist. He's been around for a while, not as long as I have. But you should go and see him sometime. I don't know if he's going to be playing here anytime soon. But it, this is Elio Pace, please. Elio Pace, where are you? <laughs> Best years of my life 
with you, Al Billy. Yeah. And it's a real honor to be asked to join you again. It's been 10 years since I played with Albert, so right. this is a, this is something I'm very much in his band. Yeah. Albert suggested we should do an Elvis Presley song, so yeah. yeah. Thank you. 
signify the uh, the Americana that I love. <clears throat> In the early morning rain With a dollar in my hand With an aching in my heart And my pockets full of sand I'm a long way from home Lord, I miss my loved one so In the early morning rain With no place to go Out on runway number nine Big 707 set to go And I'm stuck here in the grass where the pain that never grows Oh, the liquor tasted good And the women all were fine There she goes, my friend She'll be rolling down at last Hear the mighty engines roll See the silver wing on high She's a wing westward bound Far above the clouds she flies Where the morning rain don't fall And our sun always shines She'll be flying over my home In about three hours time This old airport's got me down It's no earthly good to me And I'm stuck here on the ground As cold and drunk as I can be You can jump a jet plane Like you can a freight train So I best be on my way in the early morning rain Can a jump jet plane Like you can a freight train So I best be on my way In the early morning rain In the early morning Nice, Elio. That That's the mood nice. I'm in. That's the mood I'm in today. Who starts? I think she does. You, you. They yes, say we're young and we don't know. We'll won't know until we grow. I wasn't ready. That sounds like this. <laughs> I don't know if all that's true. Cause you got me, and Robin. I got you, <laughs> babe. I got you, babe. Oh, she's going for the eye lock again. I got you, babe. <laughs> they say our love won't pay the rent. 
Before it's earned, our money's always spent. Nice. I guess that's so we don't have a pot. But at least I'm sure of all the things we got. <laughs> babe. I got you, babe. <laughs> no. I got you, babe. I got flowers. In the spring, I got you to wear my <laughs> ring. And when I'm sad, you're a clown. And if I get scared, you're always around. Hair <laughs> don't seem to right. your hair's too long, cause I don't care. With you, I can't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Then put your little hands in mine. There ain't no hill or mountain we can't climb. Babe, I got, I got you, babe. I got, got you, babe. I should read the screen from the reflection. <laughs> I got you, babe. <laughs> Got you. you to hold my hand. Oh yeah. I got you to understand. I got you to walk with me. I got you to talk with me. I got you to <laughs> kiss good night. I got you to hold me tight. I got you and I won't let go. I got you to love me so. Don't go breaking my heart. <laughs> I got <laughs> you, babe. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> nice. That was awesome. Love on the rocks. Ain't no surprise. I can hear it. Just pour me a drink, and I'll tell you some lies. Got nothing to lose, so you just sing the blues all the time. Gave you my heart, gave you my soul. You left me alone here with nothing to hold. Yesterday is gone. Now all I want is a smile. Let's just try and find a harmony. Let's just jump in. <laughs> First they say they want you. Feel how they really need you. Suddenly you find you're out there walking in a storm. When they know they have you, they may really have you. Nothing you can do or say. You got to leave. Just get away. We all know the song. You need what you need, and you say what you want. Not much you can do when the feeling is gone. Maybe blue skies above, but it's cool when your love's on the rocks. Oh, of course. <laughs> First they say they want you. Feel how they really need you. Suddenly you find you're out there walking in a storm. And when they know they have you, then they really have you. Nothing you can do or say. You've got to leave. Just get away. We all know the song. 
Love on the rocks Ain't no big surprise Just pour me a drink And I'll tell you my lies Yesterday's gone Now all I want is a smile Very nice. Very nice. Yay. That's a tough harmony. There's no real natural <laughs> harmony in there. No, and no, I didn't nail that at no, all. Great. Well, you got in there, and I'm like, you know what? He's finding it, and I'm not wow. going to. So <laughs> I'm going to stay right where I know it is. That be. needed a little bit of refining. But <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was Thank very you. nice. Thanks, I'm going to cry. We want you to clear your throats, <coughs> turn, <coughs> turn the radio <coughs> up, <coughs> and <coughs> sing along. Everyone knows this chorus. <laughs> You better sing too, Tony. And it's one of my dad's favorite songs. So, around, huh? so <laughs> inside, Tony, Tony oh, come here. Guys. Tony, come here. Yeah, go. Sit on Elio's lap. I can't hear you. I don't have my headphones. What? <laughs> come Such on. A jerk. <laughs> Two, three, four. I saw the lights on the night that I passed by her window. La, 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 la. I saw the flickering shadows of love on her blind. Tony, come here, mate. As she deceived me, I watched and went out of my mind. Everybody, on, everyone. everyone, here we go. My, 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 Delilah. Why, 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 Delilah? I've never heard this song in my life. I <laughs> could see the girl. My eye was lost like shoulders and feet. Yeah. A break of day. A break of day was that man drove away. I was waiting. Across the street to her house, she opened the door. She stood there laughing. <laughs> I held it in my, in my hand and she Jesus. laughed no more. Did he kill her? <laughs> Here we go. My, 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 Delilah. Why, 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 Delilah? So before they come to break down the door. Forgive me, Delilah, I just couldn't take any more. Dance break, Tony. <laughs> yes, get in here, dance. Watch it. Last call is coming up. <laughs> she stood there laughing. <laughs> I held the knife in my hand and Let's she laughed no more. Holy crap! Come on, well, 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 my, 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 Delilah. Why, 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 Delilah? So before he comes to break down the door. Forgive me, Delilah, I just couldn't take any more. Big finish, here we go. Forgive me, Delilah, I just couldn't take any more.